Welcome to Finance in Excel video number 25. And if you want to download this workbook, Business 233 Chapter 4, click on the link below this video and go to the Finance section. Hey, just a quick video here. This is our last video for Chapter 4. We're talking about future value, present value, solving for those, solving for rates, solving for number of periods. But we just want to take a brief look at cash flows because we can invest. 250,000, that would be our present value, and we want to calculate the future value. But we can also borrow. This is from the bank's point of view, right? Here, you're the investor. You're given the bank the money. But here, the bank can do this exact, exact same calculation to figure out how much they have to pay you on the maturity date, but their cash flows are different. Let's take a look here. When you invest, the moment you put it in the bank, that's a negative cash flow to you. Even though it's an asset on your book, it's the direction of the cash flow is to the bank. So we show that cash flow as a minus. We have uh, an annual rate of 5.5% compounded twice a year. We're going to put it in for 15 years. Now let's calculate our period rate equals annual rate divided by number of compounding periods. Enter total number of periods we need that to calculate. So we take our 15 years times our two periods per year. And then our future value, we use the future value function. Our rate, always period rate. NPR, always total number of periods. PMT, uh, we'll use that next chapter. And present value, notice I type the negative in. And it's got to be negative because from your point of view it's negative. And what does the future value function spit out when you hit enter? spits out a positive number because it knows that this is coming into your pocket on the day of maturity. From the bank's point of view, it's exactly the opposite. On the day that you deposit the money, it's a positive 250000 coming into their pocket. So when we'll do the same two calculations. By the way, we can just, this is the same setup as this, so I can highlight these formulas copy and paste. Same exact numbers here except for the only difference is when we do our future value we got our rate, Come on, we got our total number of periods, we skip over PMT and our present value, it is positive. The bank sees that 250,000 coming in as a positive and so when it calculates the future value of course it's going to spit on a negative because the bank has to pay you this amount on the maturity date. Now, that's just our first calculation, uh, and this is our last video for Chapter 4. Chapter 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we're going to do um, annuities, uh, multiple cash flow uh, in Chapter 5, then we're going to do bonds in 6, stocks in 7, and then capital budging in like 8 and 9 chapters. All of those chapters we will have multiple point of views and knowing how to do this cash flow difference. For example here, you're putting it in. For example, the bank, they're getting it. Knowing exactly when to do that will become will come in handy throughout the rest of our studies. Alright, we'll see you next chapter.